I believe as an entrepreneur, it's the biggest personal development journey you'll ever take. This is The Entrepreneur Way with Neil Ball. Unlocking the secrets of successful entrepreneurs seven days a week. Subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Twitter at Neil D. Ball. Napoleon Hill said the power of the mastermind is the driving force. To discover how you can unlock the potential in your business using the power of a mastermind, go to mastermindunlimited.com. And now, here is your host, Neil Ball. Hello, it's Neil Ball. Thank you so much for joining me today on The Entrepreneur Way. The Entrepreneur Way is about the entrepreneur's journey, the vision, the mindset, the commitment, the sacrifice, failures and successes. I'm so excited to bring you our special guest today, Kelly Robbins. But before I introduce you to her, I have a quote for you. Marley Matlin said, I'm different and my manner invites questions. I'm never afraid to answer. The Entrepreneur Way asks the questions so we all get the insight, inspiration and ideas to apply in our businesses. Kelly, welcome to the show. Are you ready to share your version of the Entrepreneur Way with us? Yes, Neil, I am ready. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show, Kelly. Kelly Robbins is an entrepreneur, writer and coach. Kelly's gift is helping others create the confidence to cut fresh tracks. As a single mother of three daughters, Kelly has run her successful home-based business while maintaining an actual life she enjoys. Kelly helps everyday people not only build their businesses authentically, but also realise that what they have a vision to create is actually possible. By living on purpose, recognising that life is a fun adventure and learning to bring the right clients to your door consistently, Kelly shares how you truly can manifest whatever you choose. Kelly, can you provide us with some more insight into your business and personal life to allow us to get to know more about what you do and who you are? Sure. Um, thanks for asking. I am, um, I've been in business 15 years, actually. And at this moment in time, I am a coach and I help other entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs sometimes um, set their business in motion. And while at the same time, they're creating the lifestyle that they want. I started um, about 15 years ago, I started my business when my third daughter was born. I worked in a very, very large corporation. And it was difficult to have that balance. You know, I wanted to be there to drive my kids to brownies and cello lessons and soccer. And at the same, I was struggling to have time to do that and still be a good um, manager, you know, to be, you know, I wasn't working as much as everyone else. I just felt really like both of my plates that were important to me weren't getting their needs met. So I did decide to quit and start my own business, and I had no clue what I was going to do. I What I did know was I wanted to spend more time with my kids and be a really good mom because I only had one chance to do this. So I left with the intention of creating a certain lifestyle for myself. And that's really the crux of what I do now is help people do what I did, and I'm still doing. Um, I call it creating your own fresh tracks. And that looks different for everyone. And I look back at 15 years ago, I really had no clue what to do. I bought a book, 101 Ways for Moms to Make Money at Home. And I read like each page was bookkeeping, like each had a job to do. And one of them was copywriting. And I read about what a copywriter was. They write websites and do marketing materials and Um, help businesses with their communication. And I thought, oh, I bet I could do that. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. that was what I did. I started, I just set up a shingle as a copywriter and not knowing anything at all about what I just started reading free information online. And um, I just started going out and meeting people and really worked way harder than I needed to uh, just to to do it. But I did it. And I... um, People ask, um, like, how much did you work? How did you get your first client? And it really wasn't the success in my longevity of being here 15 years later wasn't about 
really focusing on any of those questions. It was really about focusing on, here's what I intend to create. Here's the lifestyle I intend to create. Here's how much money I need to do it. And I was just not going to stop until it happened. And there was a just a determination and a drive to never go back to that corporate um, wear a business suit to work with pantyhose every day. Like I was just determined to not go backwards. And I think that that's probably one of the biggest keys that a lot of people are missing to success is that determination to not go back. And, uh, you know, 15 years later, uh, my business has really evolved quite a bit. I, I went from copywriting um My business really took off. I wrote for anyone that would hire me, and I ended up having a hospital hire me. And I live in the U.S. in Colorado. It was a local hospital, and I loved it. I loved like what I was writing about was fun. I was working with a lot of women and are in the medical marketing industry. I loved working with women. Um, the flexibility, they had money, they paid well, and I just kind of the trajectory just kind of took off. And I started specializing in healthcare and working with um, hospitals, and it evolved. I started looking for ways. Well, how can I make more money when I only have so much time and you're paid by the hour? Like, life is limited quickly. So I started looking for what else can I do? Uh, I got, um, I started doing trainings and on site uh, workshops for hospitals, and I just looked for different ways to expand what I was doing help in a bigger way and make more money at the same time. And the business evolved into alternative healthcare and helping smaller business entrepreneurs like chiropractors and massage. They didn't have as much money. So I started creating products online and the business took off from there. Mm -hmm. And I, I've always had that core principle of I'm going to work from home and raise my kids. And in the, the mix there, I got divorced and I have full custody. I have three daughters. And it was, there were some years there where it was really difficult to um, focus on my business and raise these kids by myself. But by keeping those core principles of here's, here's what I intend to create, here's the lifestyle I want, I've been able to continue to grow and evolve as a human and live a lifestyle I want and make money at the same time, which a lot of times I think that's why we get in business in the first place. It, like my intention was never, I'm going to go make a million dollars. My intention was always, here's, here's what I want to create. Here's the lifestyle. Here's the way I want to live and raise my children. Mm-hmm. So when you co- you're coaching people now, is that where, where the majority of your income comes from? Is that how you make money? Yeah, that's where all of it comes from. Um, after, in about 2005, my copywriting business was doing well, and I started having copywriters reach out to me that they wanted me to teach, to coach them and teach them how to do what I do. Mm-hmm. And I started a, with my very first business coach I had hired in 2005 at the same time. And I started a business called the Copywriting Institute, um, which I still have 10 years later. It's not my main focus. Um, but I started coaching then. I created a program to teach how to write copy. Like, And I believe you learn how to write marketing materials by doing it. It was actually really hands-on. And then I helped them set the business up at the same time. It was a six-month program. Uh, and it was wonderful. It ran for 10 years. It, I had customers all over the world. And I was all over the phone and over email. So I could work... Um, I live in Colorado. I ski. So I could work up in the mountains. I could work in Mexico. I could work from home. Um, I could, you know, it was actually really wonderful. And about a year or two ago, I I just grew. Like, I think we go through growth and I grew. And I'm in many ways doing the same thing. It's not exclusively with copywriters. I'm still helping people. Here's your life you want to create. Here's your business and your special, unique gifts you have to share with the world. How do you make money and build this business and help people while still having time to ski or raise your kids or whatever that looks like? So mm-hmm. it's actually, this is my fourth business, Kelly Robbins Coaching, and each one's been a natural evolution from the last. It's never been like... I bought a Domino's pizza franchise, and then I started being a personal trainer. It's never been this black and white start and stop. It's been an evolution, if that makes sense. Yeah. 
and the coaching that you do is it one on one or do you do, you do group coaching? Is which one is it? You both. Do? Both. Both. Okay. Um, I do workshops. Yeah. Um, I do one on one is a lot of it, and I do. I have some a mastermind group here in Colorado. I have courses online. Um, the the main premise really is. Um, it is about creating fresh tracks and doing your own thing your way. But the part of that journey is figuring out who am I and what do I believe and how do I find the people who are my people? How do I connect with people and feel authentic? And a lot, I know it's been a, a journey for me figuring that out, like 15 year journey figuring that out. And when I worked in corporate, um, I worked at a UPS with the big brown trucks mm-hmm. and we worked, I was, I was taught sales. Like you're taught how to sell. And it's, it felt as I stepped into my own business, it didn't feel very, um, natural. A lot of times it was like, here's the to do thing. And, oh, I have to close. Like there were all these words and, um, like it just felt kind of yucky. And it, I've gone through a lot of learning, uh, just for myself on how do I really know and own my special gifts and find the right people? How do I be me and be okay with that and put it out there in a big way so that the right people hear me and they know that I'm the one to help them, if that makes sense. Yep. And what I do now is help people figure out what that is for them. And a lot of it is, which is like the two to two and a half day workshops I do. We act and with my private clients, we'll kind of go through your whole life and look at your life story and what's happened to you. What are some obstacles you've had, some challenges, some gifts, and how has that led you to this unique space of being uniquely you right now? And how do you take that and just own it as a gift and use that to share with the world because certain people are meant I mean I really believe certain people are meant to have me help them for a certain place in time and lift them up um, just like I've had people lift me up and you're here to do it in your own way whether it's writing or um, as a healer or as a coach uh, you know or as a cookie baker you know mm-hmm. what is your unique gift and how do you help people in your unique way and when you can really own that and be comfortable with that um, when you're in sales conversations, it's not really like this yucky selling. It's here's your problem and here's how I can help you. And it feels good and natural. Mm. And how how important do you think it is for people in business to have a coach or be in a mastermind? Um, I think it's mandatory, really. Um, the I think it's mandatory because you can't, I believe you can't usually see your own shit, if that makes sense. Like, I think we're, many of us are raised with middle class beliefs. I mean, we'll just kind of go, go there. We don't, we're, it's unconscious. Some of the beliefs we have that, that sabotage us or keep us stuck at certain, in certain places. And money's a perfect example. There's subtle, um, some of us grew up with sayings like money doesn't grow on trees or he's filthy rich or, you know, even a, an example is like a, a tray of cookies and you don't take the last one. Like you only take what you need. And how does that, you know, you don't, no one thinks about that stuff. However, unconsciously it's underneath everything, like the pricing that you put together when you're in a sales conversation and someone's telling you, um, they don't have money. Uh, maybe they don't have money for this because they don't think it's important or they don't think that it's um, that they're worth spending this much money on. How do you ch- like dig into those underlying beliefs that we're not conscious of and pull them up to the surface so you can see them and look at them and then make a conscious choice to change them? And I think having a coach or a mentor is the fastest way to do it and in many instances, is it's the only way. It's how I've, whenever I've gone through a major growth or up level or gotten stuck, I've had to pay someone to help me get out of it because I can't see. I can't see. I can see all yours because I'm not in the middle of it. But seeing my own is more difficult. And it's a, uh, as a coach myself, I know, I, I feel like it's a great honor when someone chooses me to help guide them through that. Mm-hmm. 
oftentimes bumpy, messy, scary phase that they're going through into their next growth. Whether it's helping you, um, maybe you've been in business for a while and you know it's time to create your first product and put it online and you don't know what you're doing or you're afraid. Or you've had this business for a while and you're not like you're stuck at you know, 50 or 150 or whatever your income level is, you're just stuck there and you don't know what to do. It's a gift and an honor for me to be able to come in and help you see what you can't see. Yeah. And what do you enjoy most about what you do, Kelly? Um, that, <laughs> I don't know. I enjoy, um, I, I really enjoy helping people see what they can't see and the ahas that come along with it. Um, it's like some things come very naturally to me and not to other people. And it's, I, I feel like it's a gift to be able to show them that. And I also, I guess one of my other favorite things is that there's always more, um, as, as an entrepreneur, there's always more I can step into and grow. It's like, driving down a road that never ends and it just keeps getting more and more beautiful. Like sometimes the road is curvy and twisty and the edge is right there and it's scary. Um, but there's like a, a thrill to it and there it's kind of a fun adventure. If that resonates with you, I mean, I think yeah, it's a fun adventure that. that just never ends. And I honoring myself and helping others really honor themselves is, um, it's just something that's priceless, really. And helping people, you know, my being able to, to work from home and be a fresh tracker, you know, create my life my way, that is something that, like, no one in my family had ever done that before. I, and what, I, I really believe we all can do that. Like, we all really can. I think um, having a strong sense of your spiritual self-esteem and knowing that if you have a dream or a vision or an idea to do live a certain way or, or do something, that you can. You have that within you to do it. And showing people that in themselves is just, that's a game changer. That's life changing. Mm -hmm. You know, you might not want to create a lifestyle where you stay home and raise your three kids like I did. It might be that you want to travel or you have aging parents or you're retired and want something to keep, you know, everyone's got their own thing they want to do. Um, knowing, like having that inner confidence, that inner knowing that you actually can do it and helping guide people down that path. I mean, that's a game changer. Mm -hmm. And I, that's, um, that's my gift that I'm able to help people do that. So is that what drives you then, or is there something else? Yeah, that's what drives me. Mm. Totally. And, um, go on. That and it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just fun. Having fun is important to me. Yeah. Um, my kids are old. You know, it's been 15 years, so my youngest is 15. The other two are in college. And uh, my life, like this last year, I had said – well, it's maybe been two years, but my business, I outgrew that copywriting institute. Part of it was my lifestyle has shifted quite a bit. And it was time for, like, I've just got more space now with just one kid at home. Um, that it's just, you know, fun. And I've never been in that space where I, I'm like, I want to make a million dollars. But now I'm kind of in this space of, yeah, I can make a lot of, you know, I can have fun and let's play around with how much money can I make if I put my mind to it? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I uh, honor and respect that that's not where everybody should or needs to go. And I have not focused on that for 15 years. But now it's just kind of like a new fun path to go down. And, it, you know, what's next? We all, I, I really do enjoy that. Mm -hmm. It's a good adventure. And yeah, I it is a fun adventure. And if you can keep that... Um, top of mind and not get so stressed and worried. Um, it, it makes things flow easier. And it's, it's not always easy to do. It's not always easy to do. No. Um, but if you can just remember this is a fun. This, we're here on earth. This is fun. Like have fun with it. Because you can do it. And you might not know what you don't know in this moment. And that's okay. That's why we hire coaches or um, mentors or join groups, you know, to get around other people who are to learn what we don't know. Yeah. 
And how do you relax when you're not working in your business? I ski. <laughs> um, hence the fresh tracks. Because I am a, I live in Colorado and I'm a major skier. So yeah, I ski, and I have a lot of fun with that. Um, and I don't know what else I do. I love going up to the mountains. In the summer, I hike a lot. I hike quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And we have in Colorado um, 14ers. They're called, we call them 14ers. I know not everyone's familiar with that. But we have certain hikes that go above altitude to 14,000 feet. And I've hiked some of those. Is, is hard. They're hard to hike because you run out of air at the top. Um, but I do some of that. And I enjoy reading. And I... Neil and you and I were talking before the podcast. I have a podcast. It's been kind of fun um, finding people to interview and uh, share with everyone. That's been my newest little adventure is who who do I want to talk to next? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And do you have any entrepreneurial role models? I do. Um, I have an old coach. His name is David Nagel, and I really admire him. Um, I think he, he's changed my life and taught me many things over the years. And, um, another role model that I have is, um, gosh, I don't know. I haven't thought about that. Like I love Oprah Winfrey and some of the bigger, bigger name people I love to follow, but David Nagel is probably my biggest one that I've met and know. Um, and he's my role model because I think he you know, he's not one of those guys that works nonstop all the time and he's got a life and mm-hmm. he looks at life as a fun adventure. Yeah. Kelly, what I'd like to do now is talk about the time before you were an entrepreneur. What difficulties did you have to overcome when you started your business? Before I was an entrepreneur? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, fear was the biggest one. Um, and I told this story a little bit. I quit when my third daughter was born. I mean, I really didn't know what the hell I was doing. I quit. I didn't go back from maternity leave. I went back for a day and then I gave my notice. So I had some space in there where I I didn't know what I was going to do. Before I started the business, you know what probably the biggest thing was? I can remember sitting um, like I had the two kids and I had a, we had a big custom home. We had cars, you know, we were in a great neighborhood in a nice area of Colorado. And I remember sitting there thinking, is this really it? I was in my t- late twenties and I thought, is this what everyone works so hard for? What am I going to do now? <laughs> I remember sitting there thinking something's missing and I, I'm going to get bored. And I never thought about stopping and starting my own business, but I started looking at, well, what did I used to like? What, you know, what, what is there to do now? And I had a little inkling in me that um, I was missing. Um, I remember thinking, well, I used to really like, this is going to be funny, but I used to really like reading these Shirley MacLaine books that my mom had when I was a kid. And I had thought, I didn't, I wasn't very spiritual in any way, shape or form or religious. And I remember having this little inkling, like maybe I should go read some of those books again. Um, And in the last five or six years, my journey's been, I've had a strong spiritual journey and what does that mean to me? And what does spiritual self-esteem and knowing, um, not religious, but spiritual, like knowing that there, that I can do anything, that there's a force within that allows me to um, honor myself and step forward. And I think the biggest difficulty before I started the business was just that inkling, like, this is going to get boring fast. And I remember not knowing what I was going to do about it. That moment always sticks with me, though. Mm-hmm. And did you have any doubts that delayed you starting your business? Yeah, um, it was. I really just kind of I'd been talking about it um, with my husband at the time, and he was very um, noncommittal. Like, we'll do what you want to do. <laughs> you know, he mm-hmm. wasn't. Yeah, let's do this or no, let's not. He was just kind of middle of the road. So I felt like there was a lot of, um, 
I was taking a lot of responsibility in doing this. And I um, just really followed my intuition and kind of held my breath and jumped without thinking about it. And then I was like, you know, swimming to keep my head above water to make this work. And I did. And there was a lot of times where I went under. Um, but it was almost like I just jumped without thinking too much. Like I'd been think- we're talking about it for a couple months, but it was just like I just did it. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. It was almost like if I overthought it, I would talk myself out of it because it was irrational. You know, I had a really good job. I had a good salary. My job was very secure, um, but I was – it wasn't right for me. I mean, I can look at who I am now. I mean, I'm an entrepreneur to the bone that that would have just sucked the life out of me if I was still working there today. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm so grateful. Not that I mean, I loved working there. I had great friends. It was it was a great company. It was just not for me. And it would have just sucked the soul out of me. It was not. And as a 46 year old adult woman, I can know this. But back then, I just kind of held my breath and jumped. Mm -hmm. I think somebody said that being an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur is someone who will jump out of an airplane and, and figure out how to build the parachute on the way down. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's what I did. I bought like a book, <laughs> you know, and it's like I rem- my my stepdad used to make fun of me. I bought a book on what to do when you're pregnant. Like I buy books. <laughs> I bought a book and there was my career copywriter. Yeah. It's actually kind of funny. I've not looked at that. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, that's what I did. I still do that. I still do that. I was like, Neil, the podcast I started, I just started off interviewing some friends and I'd done it over the years, bunches of times. And then I thought, oh, maybe I'll make a podcast out of it. It was like the biggest ordeal. I mean, they're a lot of work. I so respect that you're doing this um, podcast and helping people in this way because they're a lot of work. I had no idea. But I just jump into stuff and then I jump into stuff, Neil, but I'm, I'm not doing it blindly. I'm following my intuition. And I might not, and I say this to everyone, you don't know the next 10 steps or the next three steps. You just know your next step. And you have to learn to trust yourself and your intuition that you just are going to know your next step. There's never a guarantee that you're going to meet your goals or make money. Um, But you can know yourself and be disciplined enough to know you're going to work your ass off and that you're committed and to listen to your intuition and that you only need to know your next step. And I think a lot of people don't step into their own business and really follow their true passion and purpose because they want that whole path laid out in front of them. But that's not how it works. You only know your next step and you have to trust that. And that's scary. And that's not how we're raised. It's really not. But in reality, that's how we create, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It made me think of something else there. I think there's a saying that says you don't have to see the whole staircase to take the next step, which ties in quite nicely with what you've said there. Yeah. What are some of the things that you did before you started your business that be helpful tips to some of the listeners who haven't yet taken the first step on the entrepreneur way? Um. Well, I don't, that's probably not a good question for me because I didn't do shit before I started my business. I just did it. Um, (laughs) I did everything after I started the business. Um, If I was talking to someone now, though, um, there are some, especially in today's world, um, you know, back when I started 15 years ago, a website cost thousands and thousands of dollars. Now you can do one for, you know, it's almost nothing. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I do this when I coach with people, I would have you really have clarity on where am I at? I actually have people answer these three questions. Where am I at? And be honest about where are you at in life? Um, and where do you want to go? Like you're plotting a map out. Here's where I'm at. Here's where I want to go. And then answer the question, how do I help people? Like, what is that? And, um, I work with a lot of healers. Sometimes the answer isn't I help them through acupuncture or um, chiropractic. The answer is I help people. Um, like I can say I help people create fresh tracks. Like I help you create your life that you want. And there's a problem in there that you're not living it now. Or I help you learn how to lead the right clients to your door consistently. What is the problem you solve? 
And if you can sit with those three questions and then step into, well, how am I going to create the, like, what am I going to do to help people solve this problem? There's millions of ways to help them solve that problem. You can do some of that stuff before you start your business, Mm -hmm. right? The biggest, the hardest one is where am I at now? Because sometimes people think they're on F and they're really on B. Like you think, um... You might think you're farther ahead than you are, which I had um, my coach <laughs> kind of knock me down a little bit. Like you, you know, you've got to get a firm grip on where am I really at. And sometimes where I'm really at, we're looking at your confidence and your um, self-esteem, not necessarily, well, I have the PhD and I've worked here and done this and this. It, sometimes it's all this inside stuff that no one talks about that plays such an important role in your ability to succeed in business. And what mistakes did you make that slowed your journey, journey Kelly? Um, well, I made a lot of them. I think I still do this. Sometimes I just, well, I, I get busy. Like I misses the capital of doing busy, busy, busy. Like I can get stuff done and I still work on this with myself. Um, And actually, it's a huge part of the coaching I do now. I think how we're being is just as much, if not more important than what we're doing. And my challenge in life is always to take the time to um, like be in a prosperous, loving, good place and not just get shit done, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I've I've experienced it myself. I write a lot Um, and I. I uh, like I write right now. I'm a columnist for the American City Business Journals in the U.S. They publish like a Denver business. They have business journals all over in some of the major cities. I can write an article and whip it out and nothing happens. I can write another one a couple weeks later and be in a calm place of giving like the same article almost. And I'll get some really great connections from it because of how I'm being as I'm creating it. Versus just getting stuff done. So one of the biggest lessons that I've learned is that the inner work is more important than all of the doing. Like get your web. And most people focus on, well, I need a website. Well, I need business cards. Well, I need to have an opt-in. Well, you know, we can spend all day and all day tomorrow making more and more and more and more and more stuff. And there's a place where you have to, Focus on that inner you, the like the real you, and that's where the success comes from. So what slowed my journey down, part of my journey has just been discovering that about myself. Hmm. Does that make sense, what I yeah, said? Yeah, absolutely. It makes total yeah, sense. Okay. A lot. If, if, I can if, just start talking, and I'm not sure if I'm clear sometimes. But, yeah, yeah. that was a big one. Yeah, really was a some big good, one. Some good little gems of advice there, actually, so thank you. Can we, Kelly, can we talk about the entrepreneurial journey a little bit? And do you think culture is important from the beginning in a business? Yeah. Well, so when I started my business, it was just me. And I've had employees, on contractors on and off. Um, I think culture is important in that you are the culture. And just like I was just talking about, the inner you is your culture, Um in the, especially in the beginning, and it's, I, I, I believe as an entrepreneur, it's the biggest personal development journey you'll ever take. And you would you step into it when you're ready to step into that personal development journey. Your results are immediately reflected to you in your sales numbers, right? Mm-hmm. Not for, yeah. I mean, your results are reflected. I think that there's people who can make money and not grow, but most of us probably listening to this, Neil, um, with you here are on that journey. So, um, your culture of your company starts with you and you honoring your word and learning how to be the, who you are and how to be authentic and putting your, um, people first, your customers for you know what it's about that integrity and it starts with you. Um, and we read a lot about leadership and culture and um, like I just interviewed um, 
I was aiming for Simon Sinek for Start With Why, and I, I even interviewed one of the people that works with him, Stephen Schledesky, and we spent the whole time talking about why. Like, why is the why? Why do you start your business, and why is it so important you keep that top of mind? Because that so much impacts the culture of the business you're creating as you grow. So knowing, and I talked about this a little bit ago, but knowing um, how you help people and that um, spiritually, and that's not the right word for everyone, but knowing that you have this purpose and this gift to share with others and why you're here doing it set, and making that come first sets the culture from the beginning. So it really starts with you. And then as you grow, you know, your people and your clients, and as they refer you, they all feel that and know it, even if it's not something you talk about, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what I have to say about that. Okay, thank you. Knowing what you know now, is there anything that if you'd known it when you started out would have helped you to shortcut the learning curve? Hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of things. (laughs) (laughs) Good Lord. (laughs) Um, There'll be some big ones and small coaches. ones, though, won't there? I, I know. <laughs> I would have hired coaches way sooner. Yeah. And I, uh, I, I've, I don't hire a lot of coaches. I've hired three. Uh, and again, I said this before. I think it's a huge honor choosing someone to be vulnerable with and share everything with. And I'm very, when I pick them, I go full, full out with it. I would have hired a coach sooner. Um, okay. The other thing, um, like. I would have known about the doing, you know, in the being. And I, that's the personal development. I, I'll never forget. I'm going to share a story if we have time. Um, yeah, go ahead. I had hired um, my second coach, David Nagle, who I had brought up before. And I remember I spent so much money that I did not have at the time. Like it was a two car payment. I mean, it was just so much money. And I was so excited because I knew he was going to sprinkle the magic dust on me and I was just going to skyrocket my business. And I had just gotten divorced. Um, my, we had, um, like I was single, full custody with these kids. Like, you know, it was just stressful. And I was just had my pen and I got on the phone with him and I was like, yes, this is so exciting. And he said to me, um, like very calmly and slowly, he said, well, Kelly, it's not what you're doing. It's how you're being. And I had never heard that before. And I, he, you know, I had at that time a newsletter, a blog, a website. I did free teleclass. Like I did everything. I had products on that. Like I had all this stuff. And he said, it's not what you're doing. It's how you're being. And I put my pencil down and I sat there and I swear to God, there was silence for two minutes. Like it was silence because I didn't know what to say and I just said this isn't magic sprinkle dust (laughs) this isn't this isn't what you're supposed to say and I said what does that mean because I I really didn't know and he said well it's your self-confidence and believing in yourself and it's all this stuff and I I remember going damn I paid $25,000 like I was like I can't believe this and we got off the phone and I remember sitting there and thinking well how does a person how do I change my confidence? Like, how do I fix that? And it was like a long journey and no one talks about it. But I, I, that, I think if you step into starting your business in this open coachable place and reach out, like, don't wait for the struggle, get help now and invest in yourself and be open to what that person says to you. Like one of the things that I, I can say I chose David Nagel at that point as a coach was he would call me out on my shit and he'd tell me when I wasn't being coachable. So um, is be open and be coachable to what they say because sometimes I have clients who aren't doing what they need to do and sometimes the journey is on how you're being. You don't know until you start. And how much does gut feeling influence your decisions in your business? Um, a lot. I call it my intuition. A lot more now than it did 15 years ago. Um, and my gut feeling, I have more experience than I did 15 years ago. Yeah. But when I talk about trust your next step and we're here to cut fresh tracks, like 
to me, your next step is intuitive. And you want to look at your options and make smart decisions, but your gut will tell you um, – you're, there's a, you there's a difference between knowing what's fear and what's your intuition and that I think takes some experience and some failures oftentimes till you get the difference down and then I use it a lot I do use it a lot life is made of constant change whether we like it or not and in fact some people say the only constant is change Kelly how do you try to keep up with change um, well, in my world, it's always changing. So I think, um, I'm focusing on, um, taking time for myself and calming, like my, my head will go racing. <laughs> like I go, my head goes and I actually have rituals that I do every morning and every evening, um, and I've the last year or so I've gotten very disciplined with myself to help quiet that down. But I also have to say that life is like running a business. There's a lot of change and I have to keep changing or I'm not growing. Mm -hmm. So it's a constant and I've gotten more comfortable with it. The first time it happened, like the world blew up and exploded and I had major meltdowns. Now I know to expect it. And now I can even go, oh, my gosh, here's my pattern. I go through, and I think everyone's different, but I go through like two-year cycles. When I'm starting to step into a change, it's almost a two-year like roller coaster thing. And now I know I'm going to come out of it. In the beginning, I didn't know. Um, and there's only the only thing is experience to tell me that. So – I don't know if that answers the question, but yeah, um, I think change is actually a good thing. And yes, it's always going to happen. Getting comfortable with it for me has been some experience getting comfortable. And now I can see the pattern behind it. But you have to embrace it rather than fight it because you're not going to win anyway. Yeah. And what is your favorite book on entrepreneurialism, business, personal development, leadership, or motivation? And can you tell us why you have chosen it? Oh, um, gosh, I have a lot of books. Um, one of my favorite is called God Works Through Faith. I have to look up who the author is because I... Um, forget right off the top of my head. And it sounds like a crazy book because it's not really a business book. Um, it's by Vernon Howard. Um, oh, no, it's by Robert Russell, God Works Through Faith. And it one of the biggest things that changed my business, really it changed my life, was ha learning to have faith. And what did that mean to me? And what it really boiled down to was knowing deep, deep, deep inside to trust my intuition. And that, um, and I think everyone has their own different words that they'll use for the universe or spirit or what, you know, everyone's got their own different things. But if you can have faith in yourself, if I can have faith in myself and trust myself and know that even if I screw up majorly, which I will, it's all okay and it's it's okay. It's not the end of the world. And I, I know myself enough to know that I'll keep going. And that's not a business book, but that's one of my, I mean, I read it over and over again. It's, when times get tough, I read it again. Um, I have a lot of business books mm -hmm. and I read a lot. Like I just um, read Start With Why was a good book. Like there's a lot of good business books out there, but God Works Through Face was a good one for me. Okay. Thank you for that. Everyone, when you have a busy life, listening to audio books is a great way to expand your knowledge in the time when you may be doing other things, such as driving or when you're at the gym. We have a special offer for you of a free audio book of your choosing. To choose your free audio book, go to www.freeaudiobookoffer.com. As long as you haven't already signed up, then you will qualify. Kelly, what I'd like to do now is just speculate about a few things in the future with you. What one thing would you do with your business if you knew that you would, you could not fail? Well, um, I, 
I don't know. That's a good question, Neil. Mm-hmm. Um, I I don't know what I would do with my business. I'd maybe grow it a lot faster than I am. Um, and there's a part of me that's like, I'm doing these workshops and having fun and I'm very good at, like, I love being one-on-one with these small groups and I might take it to different cities. There's also a part of me who still has a 15 year old at home that needs to be here and Mm -hmm. wants to be here um, and not travel so much. So, um, you know, I don't know what my one thing would do. That's a good question. That's a good question. And what skill, if you were excellent at it, would help you the most to double your business? I would say um, speaking, getting, speaking in front of people, getting in front of people more. And I say that stepping into it currently um because as i said the copywriting institute my last business was online i didn't leave my house for 10 years i built that business and never left and now um with kelly robbins coaching i'm getting out and making friends (laughs) and leaving my house on occasion Mm -hmm. um which is different and fun and uh, stepping into that more and speaking and getting in front of people is i'm it's very powerful and I could easily double my business if I stepped into that faster is probably um, a better word. Okay. In five years from now, if a well-known business publication was publishing an article on your business after talking to your customers and suppliers, what would you like it to say? Um, I would like it to say that Kelly Robbins helps people cut fresh tracks really mm-hmm. like that's a game changer that kelly helps people all these people's lives all these people have created the life they want that they didn't think was possible because of something i showed them or said or an interview i did from something that's um such a um empowering place to be such a game changer it has been for me in my life that i really would love for to um share that with others really because we all have we all have that right to do that we just don't step into it from fear off or we don't know what we don't know sometimes too but there's a lot of fear in there that if i could tell everyone on the planet and have them know that and start taking action just think how how much the world would change. You know, we mm-hmm. would be happier. Um, we would be using our gifts and not going through motions, just doing stuff because we're supposed to. Um, and I think for those of you listening who have corporate backgrounds like I did, we're really groomed to be and act and behave a certain way. Like there's politics. Like There's just all these ways we're supposed to be. And what a journey it is realizing, well, this isn't me. This isn't me. I don't you know, this is me and uncovering that and stepping forth in that space is just what would change the world. Hmm. Kelly, we're now at the part of the show where you share three golden nuggets with us. So the first one is what's your favorite quote and how have you applied it? Oh, Neil, I'm not, I don't have the favorite quote. I don't have that to answer you. I have some, but I don't have it right here. Okay. And do you have any favorite online resources that you can share with us? Um, but you know what? My favorite online resource is (laughs) thesaurus.com. Thesaurus.com. I go to thesaurus.com and look up the definition of word, like words all the time. Honestly, that's my favorite resource. (laughs) I've not heard of that. And I... (laughs) That's not for everybody. I'm a writer, but yeah. that's where I, I'm, you asked me that question. I'm like, what website I'm always at? Do, yeah. Thesaurus.com. So, okay. I don't know. That's good. And what is your best advice to other entrepreneurs? My best advice to other entrepreneurs is to only um, trust your next step. Is Don't worry about the next two steps or five steps, just your next step. Take the step, stop and breathe, and then go to the next one. You're not going to know um, the whole path. I know we talked about this earlier, Neil, but mm-hmm. you won't know the whole path and you're not supposed to. That's not 
cutting fresh tracks. That's not doing your thing your way. Oftentimes we buy these kits and want formulas and we spend all this time and money following other people's paths. And what we really want to do is learn from other people. But then there's a point in time and space where you just have to say, here's my next path. And that's my next path. Kelly's next path, next step is different than Neil's. Mm -hmm. And it's different than Susie's and David's and Jojo, you know, and it's supposed to be that way. That's how it's supposed to be. So that's my best advice. Everyone, if you didn't manage to get a note of Kelly's favorite resource or her favorite book, you can find the links on Kelly's show notes page. Just go to theentrepreneurway.com and search for Kelly or Kelly Robbins in the search box. Kelly, is there anything else that you'd like to add about your business? Anything else I'd like to add? Well, um, I don't think so. I would love to offer a gift to everyone, if that's okay, Neil. Okay. I have on my webpage, Tracks to Cash, a three free video series that you can sign up for. And in the video series, I talk, I talk about marketing, but I'm at the same time talking to you about how you can create your own unique fresh tracks. What are your tracks to cash? How do you, how do you learn your next step and learn to trust that? And you can get that at kellyrobbins.net. Okay. Thank you for that. Kelly, you've really helped us certainly cut some fresh tracks today with some of your wisdom and advice and knowledge. So thank you very much for coming on the show. It's been great having you here. Thank you, Neil. It's been my honor. Thank you for asking me. It was fun. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for listening to The Entrepreneur Way. Subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Twitter at Neil D. Ball.